I've been impatiently waiting for the new Mac releases for a while now. There's a handful of things I've been really excited about. And one of them, although admittedly a little niche, is something that I really need. That feature is Wi-Fi 7. I knew it was going to be coming to the new back for one simple reason. It came with my new iPhone. Yes. This guy, iPhone 16 Pro, has Wi-Fi 7. I'm consistently able to get as fast as like a 2 gigabit per second connection on my phone. Do you know what doesn't have it though? My M2 MacBook Pro. Despite having one of the most powerful processors and some of the best architecture in the world, this computer has much worse Wi-Fi speeds than my phone does. You might be thinking, why do you care? The fastest internet connection you can reasonably get in America is gigabit. And I agree. For most people, most of the time, having Wi-Fi speeds beyond one gigabit makes literally no sense. Hell, beyond 400 megabit probably isn't that important. But this isn't a computer for normal people. They have one for that. It's called the MacBook Air. This is the MacBook Pro. It is for professionals. And one of the things I do as a professional is move files around my network really, really quickly. And that's why I was so excited for the new MacBooks to drop because there's no way Apple's gonna release M4s and release Thunderbolt 5 and all of these awesome changes for professionals and not at least get the MacBook up to date to match the new iPhone, right? 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 <laughs> and today was a tough day for me. I was so certain that the new MacBook would come with Wi-Fi 7, that even though I'm on an M2 Max, that I'm very happy with performance-wise, spec-wise, everything-wise, I upgraded for the faster speeds. Turns out it's using the same Wi-Fi chip from the MacBook I'm on right now, which is a chip that is significantly slower than my iPhone. Yeah, there's a lot of misconceptions here. A lot of things people don't seem to understand about networks, especially Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi specs and expected speeds and how these things get implemented at Apple. And I wanna dive in because I have feelings. One of those feelings is being burnt and backstabbed. So I wanna talk about why. I actually pre-ordered immediately because I didn't see a world in which Apple didn't get the Wi-Fi speeds up to date in the new MacBook. It was just hard for me to fathom Apple not doing that. So I ended up canceling my pre-order, which was quite annoying because I made the pre-order from the website on my phone where I wasn't signed in. So I had to attach it to my Apple account just to be able to cancel it. <sighs> Before we go too much further, I want to emphasize that for most people, especially those who don't have a NAS, which is network attached storage on their local network, this doesn't matter for them. I've probably spent upwards of six to seven grand on network equipment in the last two years between over a thousand dollars worth of 10 gig ethernet switches at least fourteen hundred dollars of access points thousand plus in routers then all of the gig the, and then all of the 10 gig adapters and all of the devices that i own as well as the 350 dollar thunderbolt dock with a 10 gig port i have my laptop plugged into right now across all of those things i am a lot of money in on 10 gig and on wi-fi 7. And my whole place is 10 gig and Wi-Fi 7. I have 10 gig ethernet lines running from my studio on my top floor to my office on my bottom floor. And I can get 10 gig speeds. I'm gonna run iPerf on my MacBook right now against Inside Local, which is my internal Vercel instance. Don't think too much about the name. This is a machine on my network that also has 10 gig. And as you can see, I can push hilarious amounts of bandwidth even though this is the same ethernet connection my stream is currently going through. Kind of nuts, <laughs> like actually insanely nuts. And I'm not expecting this on Wi-Fi. I wanna be very clear. This is not a speed that I think my network can reasonably do over wireless, but I am going to quickly disable the Thunderbolt connection so that you can see how fast it goes without it. We are now on the Wi-Fi. We'll run the same test. Do you understand my pain? My access point's approximately 30 feet from me. 15 times difference. And I'm not sitting here pretending I'm gonna get 10 gig down over Wi-Fi. What I am going to do is quickly run the test on my phone. Same distance, effectively same test. I'm not gonna run iPerf on my phone, but I have another identical test here that I can run. On my phone from the same distance, I'm getting about 1500 megabits per second down. I'm literally getting three times the speeds on my phone that I'm getting from my Mac. 
And if this was just because my Mac's old and my phone is new, that'd be one thing. But that's not what's going on here. What's going on here is the chip in this is the exact same one that's in Apple's brand new MacBook. What? I understand this isn't something everyone cares about or benefits from. What's absurd to me is that my iPhone Pro is more pro when it comes to networking than my MacBook Pro will be if I get the new one. I have no idea what's going on or what Apple is thinking here. And there's also a lot of misconceptions about how the Wi-Fi chips themselves work. So I need to break into that a little bit. I hate to roast people on Twitter, but this is my second channel, so I'll do as I fucking please. Sorry to Canadian Malice, but you are the, the classic bad take about networking here. Do you realize how fast Wi-Fi 6E is? Sounds like you're spec chasing, buying into the biggest number rhetoric. 6E gives you up to 9.6 gigabits per second. You, as I said here, like, like what I wanted to say, and I was polite, is this person clearly doesn't understand anything about how wireless standards work. But what I said here instead is, I don't give a fuck about the theoretical bandwidth caps. I give a fuck that my iPhone gets double the bandwidth as my 6E MacBook on the same couch. I was wrong. It's triple. So Wi-Fi 6 es 9.6 gigabits per second, and Wi-Fi 7 is 40. That's 9.6. That's faster than the Ethernet speeds I was showing. Clearly, that should be fine, right? Well, the way your experience works tends to be very different when you actually implement your wireless network. So on this top part here, this is max speed. And on the y-axis, we'll say signal strength. Sorry, this is y, that's x. You guys get the idea. Max speed here, signal strength here. Signal strength is usually a function of how far away are you from the router plus how many things are in between you and the router with a little bit of how good is the antenna on the device connecting to the router. So if we have, we'll make Wi-Fi 6E blue and we'll make Wi-Fi 7 yellow. So this is 40 Gbps. And about a fourth of the way up, we have 10 Gbps. You understand where these things start. Obviously, Wi-Fi 7 starts there and Wi-Fi 6E starts here. The harsh reality of how Wi-Fi actually works is that your speeds look a lot more like this. Where if you happen to be directly next to your router, you can hit that theoretical. But realistically speaking, it looks more like this, where any distance between you and your router just decimates the speeds immediately. Whereas with Wi-Fi 7, it's still going to get decimated immediately. But even if we like compare the ratio, hopefully this helps clarify the difference. <laughs> Because people only look at this number, which literally only applies if you are physically fucking next to your router, <laughs> as though this is what we're comparing. That's not what we're comparing. That's not the reality of Wi-Fi. The reality is most people live between like here and probably here in terms of their range of their network and in terms of the strength of their signal. And that's why I'm seeing 300 megabit per second on Wi-Fi 6E and I'm seeing a gig and a half on Wi-Fi 7. I hope this helps clarify because people are really, really dumb about this. And I am increasingly annoyed because it's so easy. It's so easy to understand this. And I, yeah, what the fuck, Apple? <laughs> so my, my last important piece here is my conspiracy theory. My conspiracy theory is that the MacBook M4 line was built and ready to ship a while back. We saw these machines leaking about a month ago with people in Russia getting complete, fully functional machines. My guess is that Apple had these entirely ready to go before they even started manufacturing the iPhone. And that's the only reason the iPhone got a faster Wi-Fi chip than the MacBook did. It's the only reason the iPhone supports a newer standard than the MacBook does. Because those new MacBooks have been done for months, if not half a year at this point. I have no way to prove this. I don't have any inside connections that have confirmed any of these things. It's just the only reason I could see Apple doing this. I was prepared to upgrade immediately. And I know it seems crazy to do that just for a network speed bump, but I benefit a lot from these changes and I have people that I can give or sell my current machine to without taking too big of a loss. But I canceled my order because I'm disappointed. I cannot believe Apple released yet another professional tier device that costs thousands upon thousands of dollars that doesn't meet the current high-end standard for professional wireless networking. I'm committed to Wi-Fi 7 and 10 gig ethernet. Thankfully, so is Apple. I had a tweet here. This machine <laughs> is such a hilariously great value. The fact that for 700 bucks, you can get a computer that does 10 gig ethernet, has an insanely fast chip, three Thunderbolt ports, absurd value for the money, genuinely. 
specking out something similar in the PC world would cost quite a bit more and be quite a bit larger and use significantly more power. So I know Apple gets it. I know Apple knows the importance of these things around networking. Why can't I have it in my MacBook? Apple, please fix this one. I, I still can't believe you did this. <sighs> Until next time, peace nerds.